We begin tonight with new claims about the terror attack in Benghazi that killed four Americans. The New York Times has posted a bombshell accounting on its website. Its author claims a long investigation found the deadly attack was fueled in part by an anger over an anti-Islam American-made video and that Al-Qaeda was not involved. Our men who died that night on September 11th last year, Ambassador Chris Stevens, State Department employee Sean Smith, and Navy SEALs Glenn Doherty and Tyrone Woods. Fox News has covered Benghazi since the beginning. Our reporting includes on-the-record comments made from lawmakers who have access to classified briefings and raw intelligence, information that indicates just the opposite of what this New York Times article says. And just a few hours ago, I asked New York Congressman Peter King, chairman of the Subcommittee on Counterterrorism and Intelligence, what he thinks of the New York Times report. He doesn't agree with it. Here's why. They're saying that this shows al-Qaeda was not involved. The group that was involved, which they say was involved, was Ansar al-Sharia, which is part of the al-Qaeda network. While it's not officially linked to al-Qaeda, in all the years I've been briefed on intelligence matters, Ansar al-Sharia is considered part of the al-Qaeda network. Congressman King also calls this report misleading. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is going to join us now by phone from Canada. And Catherine, you've been covering this since the very day after the attack. Why are the accounts of what happened that night so different? Well, Harris, thank you. The Republican congressman who heads up the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Rogers, has access to classified briefings, and more significantly, he has access to the raw classified data so that he can make his own independent assessments. And what he has consistently told Fox News on the record since the day after the attack in 2012 is that this was a pre-planned, premeditated, military-style attack with both direct and indirect fire, and that it was not a spontaneous response to this anti-Islam video. And in more recent interviews, the congressman has indicated to Fox News that this is also the case as they've learned more about who is responsible. Here's a segment of a recent interview. It, it is accurate that of the group that, that uh, is being targeted by the Bureau at this point, um, there's strong Al-Qaeda ties. Separately, Fox News has confirmed through intelligence sources who are not authorized to speak on the record that key suspects in the Benghazi terrorist attack have historic ties to the al-Qaeda senior leadership. They include Sufyan bin Kumu there on the left, who's a former Guantanamo Bay detainee, as well as Faraj al-Shalabi, who was described to Fox News as a former bodyguard for the al-Qaeda network. So, Harris, when you take this strong body of evidence, you must balance it against this new reporting in the Fox in the New York Times report to reach your own conclusion. And you know, Catherine, another thing, Congressman King told me today earlier that, that the problem with this report for him is that it makes it seem like the people on the ground, you, you're discounting their stories. They said there was no demonstration to any video going on outside that outpost when our people were killed. Now, I know the New York Times report seems to minimize the role of al-Qaeda's presence in Benghazi, and that actually contradicts what we know we've seen in documentations. How do you count for that? Well, what we've seen in the documentation, we've been able to review a classified cable here at Fox News that was sent in August of 2012, one month before the attack, and it was sent to the office of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who received multiple questions about this classified cable during her congressional testimony. And it states very specifically that it was well known to the State Department, as well as the CIA operation in Benghazi, that there were at least 10 Islamist training camps in that city, in including those related to al-Qaeda. So again, this is strong evidence that would not minimize the role of al-Qaeda-linked individuals or those sympathetic to al-Qaeda in this attack. And more significantly, we've been able to confirm that there was likely communication between primary suspects in the Benghazi attack and the al-Qaeda leadership in Pakistan before and after the event here. You know, all of this from this New York Times article is coming from a book. It's like six chapters of it. So, you know, you might question whether there's any sort of an agenda here. I mean, uh, usually with a book, you want to try to sell it. Uh, I'm curious, any reaction from the White House or national security? Well, there has been no response uh, so far this evening from the White House nor the National Security Council. But it's important to see this new reporting in the context of a book that's being sold, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and also a pretty steady drumbeat we've had since the end of October to really try and minimize any kind of link to al-Qaeda in this terrorist attack here. Why? 
Well, I can only speak for our own reporting at Fox News. And if there is one piece of evidence that our listeners ought to focus on, it's the second wave of the attack and the use of mortars on the CIA annex. That is where the two mm-hmm. former Navy SEALs, Glenn Doherty, as well as Tyrone Woods, were killed. And we know based on recent testimony on Capitol Hill from the CIA contractors who were on the ground in Benghazi that there were five mortars that rained down on the annex in under a minute, and three were deadly accurate. That takes premeditation, it takes pre-planning, but more significantly, it takes professional military-style training. And what we have consistently been told at Fox News is that some of the best mortar teams in the U.S. military could only hope for that kind of accuracy. Mm. So the suggestion that these mortars were somehow picked up and shot off the back of a pickup truck and had that kind of accuracy really runs counter to the evidence that's been laid out here. Yeah, it makes you wonder what kind of sources were gathered for or, or used to gather the information for this New York Times article based on this book, six chapters of which are in the paper uh, to see what's coming out next. And part of it, too, might just be because a lot of people close to this have been sworn to secrecy. Well, some have been sworn to secrecy, but I, again, would go back to our ongoing investigation uh, here at Fox News Harris and these on-the-record interviews, Mm -hmm. as well as documents that we have been able to personally review, uh, and the New York Times reporting does rely uh, significantly on individuals who will not be named uh, for whatever reason. Catherine Herridge helping us break down these uh, breaking developments as they're coming out, and certainly there will be more widespread reaction to this as it seems to fly in the face of what what we know to be true, at least on the record so far, this New York Times article if about I could make, If I could make Harris just one final point, Absolutely. if you don't mind me just jumping in. Um, <clears throat> the idea that the video was responsible for the attack um, is, is significantly undercut by the social media traffic in Benghazi leading up to the assault. An independent data mining firm assessed that social media traffic, more than 4,000 posts that led up to the attack on September 11th. And there was not one reference in the Benghazi social media to the anti-Islam video. In fact, the first reference to that video was nearly a full day after the attack, and it was a retweet of a Russia Today story. So if it is plausible that this was somehow a response to the video, there was absolutely no agitation, if you will, in the social media traffic that would somehow support that. And, of course, for everybody else, the first time we really started hearing a whole lot about it was from Susan Rice, who was basically the talking points carrier for the White House with those five interviews she did on that Sunday after this. Uh, Catherine Herridge, thank you very much. We appreciate your reporting on this.